Hey fellow tennis nerd, today I'm recording on my phone. Uh, hopefully that should uh, improve sound quality a little bit over the camera in a noisy environment. We'll see, I'm waiting on my new microphone, so hopefully sound quality and everything will be better. Uh, this iPhone 11 should be a pretty good camera for videos as well, but we'll see. Um, today I want to talk a bit briefly about control rackets, what, make, uh, what makes a racket a control racket. Is it just a string pattern? Is it the beam width? Uh, and what good control rackets are available on the market right now? But back in the good old days, they used to make con more control rackets with the low, with higher weight, um, lower flex rating. So the RA stiffness rating was really low, around the 60, low 60s, even high 50s, like in the Head Pro Tour um, 630 or 280. Uh, which I actually have in the new version here. So uh, this is the Head Pro Tour. As you all know, perhaps um, one of the best uh, rackets of all time, according to most racket nerds. Um, it's a great racket for sure, I agree. It's not that easy to use, to be honest. Today's game is more spin focused, it's faster. Um, so it's a little bit different with all the polyester strings that give you extra spin and control. And, and the you know stiffer rackets that allow you to use more spin on your shots. So tennis has changed a bit. This racket still works, depending on your style of play. It's not gonna be the most forgiving racket, but it's still a very nice frame for players suffering perhaps from any kind of arm issues because it's very, very soft and nice and arm friendly. Despite the 65 uh, stiffness RA that was listed on Tennis Warehouse, this racket actually plays softer than that, plays close to the original, I think. Um, so this is a great frame, uh, the review is coming very soon. And um, it's 1820, so tight string pattern, and it's um, small head size, 95 square inches, 20 millimeter beam, all these things make up for a lot of control. Um, you're not going to get a lot of spin out of this string, but it is surprisingly spin friendly for what it is. There are 18, 20, 95 square inch rackets that are less spin friendly than this for sure, uh, but it's not the most spin friendly. Uh, that's the reason Andy Murray, he got his own kind of mold with 1619 and some other pros uh, that use the PT57A 1619. But this is pretty spin friendly for an 1820 racket and thin beam, tight pattern and uh, low flex rating and that is definitely giving you the control you want to be really 100% dialed in on your shots. It's not going to give you a lot of free power so this is definitely not for non-advanced players I would say unless you really want to take the long journey and try to learn tennis the hard way. Uh, but great frame should be on the controls list. Another frame that has an 1820 string pattern and it's a classic is the 6195, it comes in 16, 18, 1820. Uh, also a thin-ish beam, 22 millimeters, so it is thicker, it does give you more power and the stiffness rating is definitely higher with this K-Factor version. I've reviewed it on Tennis Nerd and YouTube, uh, so uh, you can check that out. This racket gives you a lot of pop for uh, a tight pattern thinish beam racket, so it's not the whole truth about small head size, no power. It comes from stiffness, it comes from build, it comes from uh, materials, it comes from the thickness of the beam. But this is another example, has a tight string pattern as the Pro Tour, but definitely more pop on your shots, you'll notice that straight away. A little bit more prone to arm issues if you're using this one, it is quite stiff, especially strong with a full bit of poly. So for these tight rackets, uh, same with the Pro Tour, I recommend you go with the hybrid, softer multi-filament, synthetic gut or natural gut in the mains, and then a round poly in the crosses perhaps, because the shaped polys might saw into the, the softer string and make the lifespan shorter. So that's what I would recommend for these types of rackets. Looking at the other end of the control spectrum, so that's an ultra control racket, mid-size frames, they're not as popular anymore. Uh, you don't see a lot of like 90 square inch rackets like the like the Tour 90 that Federer was using. Uh, you're not seeing that as much anymore. Some rec players, club players still use 90 square inch rackets, but it's not very common. Same with the Head Prestige Classic 600 used by Safin and um, a lot, you know, Ivan Isevich and a bunch of other players. It's not very popular anymore. The head size is a bit too small, although the feel is absolutely brilliant. The control is absolutely fantastic but it's not that easy to generate any kind of power with. You need it to be very you know, heavy uh, to have any kind of power. Um, I hope to review that very soon, the Classic 600 series, perhaps in a Pro Stock version. 
uh, so that uh, we can talk about how that actually performs compared to more modern frames. Talking about modern frames, uh, Bubble Up is usually on the stiffer end of the spectrum. They've decided that they want to go for power. They've discontinued the pure control line, uh, which was the, the Storm uh, that is this racket that I really like that Sampras uses. Check out the video for more info about that. And um, yeah, this brilliant, it's very quite plush racket, uh, not available anymore. And quite sad that they did, did discontinue this one. Uh, so nowadays, the most control-oriented bubble frame you might find is the Pure Strike uh, or the Pure Aero VS, which I also have here. So the Pure Strike is definitely, as you can hear by the name, it's definitely more for attacking players. It's definitely a racket. It's not uh, as controlled as the Pure Control or the you know Pure Storm. Uh, so this one is, is definitely a lot more popping, a pretty high stiffness rating but it's a bit more controlled than the Pure Aero or Pure Drive. But the Bubble Ups, they don't really offer these kind of plush control-oriented rackets anymore. If they should, please comment below. I think they should. I think they should bring back the Pure Control. Um, but I'm not sure if their, their sales numbers will say the same. It is tough, I know, to sell these control-oriented rackets, but I think that the success, uh, I, the imagined success, I don't know how well it has been selling of the reissued Head Pro Tour 2.0 and might make other brands to change their mind as well a bit, but we'll see. But this one is at the top end of the scale when it comes to control, uh, because it's very, very powerful, but it has a more controlled launch angle, which means kind of the ball trajectory uh, and kind of a flatter, you know, um, trajectory with the ball. So in that sense, it has control, but the stiffness and the thicker beam still makes it more powerful. Uh, Wilson, uh, they do create some more control-oriented racket, the Ultra Tour, or now called the Ultra Pro, is a very good example. Hope to review the new version, I don't think they've changed that much. Uh, but the Ultra Tour is a really nice control frame from Wilson. They also have this, the Pro Staff 97, this is without countervail um, technology, because there was a bit of confusion around my previous review about this one. I wasn't sure myself, I thought uh, the guy I bought it from only sold the Wilson countervail rackets, but this is actually a non countervail version. So this very controlled, also similar to the bubble, quite stiff, uh, so not for sensitive elbows, but offers good control and quite good spin for the 16-19 string pattern. So this is a direct competitor to the, to the Pure Strike. Um, while the Blade version 7, I don't have it here, um, is definitely more plush. So thanks to the Feel Flex, they made it more plush. They uh, made it a bit more of a kind of a player's frame compared to the previous version with countervail that was stiffer but more damp than thanks to the countervail material. So I think this one is uh, one of the more control oriented frames along with the Ultra Tour in the Wilson lineup. They have discontinued the 6195, which is a bit of a shame. You can still get the K Factor version in the US, but uh, other than that, I don't think they're gonna create a lot more 95 screen rackets anymore. Uh, which is a shame for some players, but I can also understand it from one point of view because 97 still gives you a lot of control, same with 98, and um, you get a bit more forgiveness from the larger string bed, and um, yeah. Another way, another control-oriented racket line, the Prince Phantom line, this is the 100P, 97P was a super plush frame as well, I really like that one. And the 100P is nice if you like a bit more real estate, a bit more forgiveness from the string bed, quite a uh, roundish head shape as well. Uh, so uh, this one is very good. You can see the beam ultra thin going from here up to here. So it really has a flexible response. You really feel the racket flexing on impact. Um, so you can string this with a poly, pretty stiff poly, and it's still comfortable to use. Uh, I really like the Phantom, if you want more spin, the Phantom 100X is the way to go probably. But for controlling the racket, the Phantoms are perfect. 93P is as much control as you can get, a 1820 version or the 1418 with a bit of a crazy spin angle. And then you have uh, the 97P, which is perhaps my favorite, not sure, it's, it's between that one and this one. But all the Phantom P rackets are really nice and can really recommend them. Um, very plush feeling, not everyone's cup of tea. I know some players like stiff frames, but if you like control, if you like flex in a frame and a thinner beam, the Phantom is the way to go. 
Another frame I really like for control-oriented brackets, so I talked about the 18, 20, 95 square inch brackets before. This is the, the Strixon uh, CX200 Tour 1619 that I really like. Uh, one of the better 95 square inch brackets released in a while. And uh, the 1820 is great. The 1619, when you have an open pattern, it does give you a bit more spin. Uh, spacing is definitely different uh, if you can compare to the Pro Tour, uh, the spacing is different, not sure you can tell, but it is quite a difference. And um, you can definitely get a little bit more lift on your shots with this one. One thing that I need to say about the 95 square inch rack is that you need a bit more weight for these. Uh, this one is 310 grams unstrung, and when I put it on the swing weight machine, it gave me a pretty low reading, so this one was a bit under spec and uh, it was like 306 swing weight on um, with, with strings, which is way under spec. And so you need to add weight to this one to make it play more stable, give you a bit more power, a bit bigger sweet spots. So the weight at three and nine is important with these 95 square inch rackets. You can't just um, play, use it the same way as you would a 100 square inch rackets. You need a bit more weight on them because of the smaller a string bed. So that's just science and uh, important to keep in mind that if you're buying a 310 gram or 315 gram unstrung and 95 square inch racket you probably would have to add a little bit of weight to get it up to the way it should be according to physics, according to tennis racket history and um, yeah so that's good to, to know but for more spin 1619 for more control 1820 it has a lower trajectory you might clip the net more but you're also more in the pinpoint precision mode. Uh, but this one is a very nice frame, CX200 Tour. I think they really did a good job with this one. Uh, now we get into uh, the Gravity uh, from Head, which I really like. This is the Gravity Pro, uh, <clears throat> which is the most control of the Gravity. Uh, quite uh, heavy, uh, usually swing weight. Of the, the ones I've measured are around 332-ish, uh, a little bit high for most players, uh, rec players at least. And, uh, but really nice racket. Finish beam, 20 millimeter beam, and um, despite the large head, it still offers a very tight string pattern, 1820, uh, which allows you to get 100% control on all your shots. Uh, but then you might, you know, like a smaller head more because you can get through the air more. You, you have less, um, you know, obviously uh, real estate here to swing through. So for me, I pr prefer usually a little bit smaller head size, 98, 97 to get it to swing through the air faster, especially on my one-handed backhand. If I had a double-handed backhand, I wouldn't care as much. I would probably be uh, a lot happier with a, double, with a 100 square inch racket than I would now. Uh, so this one's very nice, Gravity Pro, a bit demanding. If it's too demanding for you weight-wise and you want to be able to customize a bit, go with the MP or the Tour instead. But the Gravity is a nice introduction uh, to the control oriented racket, which is kind of a hybrid between more forgiving frames and frames that offer a lot of control thanks to the tighter string bed and the lower stiffness rating. So this one has a, has a lowish rating of, of around 60, uh, one, two uh, with strings. Uh, so great, gravity, gravity line and very nice to see innovations towards that uh, spectrum with more control oriented frames. And also a racket I really like, uh, the Dark Pro 197 AK, uh, I think it's called AK97S uh, in this uh, Tennis Nerd paint job, um, obviously. I uh, really like this frame, and not just saying it because it has Tennis Nerd on it. Uh, it is uh, quite high swing weight, this one that they made for me, but uh, I do really like swinging with it. Now I'm waiting for a grommet strip, uh, so I can't use it at the moment, but I wanted to mention it that there are smaller brands like Angel, Dacor, uh, even 10x that made quality rackets uh, for control oriented players and, um, and 95 97 square inches and upwards so check them out if you want kind of a more personal approach to it you want to have uh, your custom specs you want to have your custom paint uh, and these kind of things they offer you a bit more uh, leeway also with specs and so for Quality control is an issue these days, so uh, it's usually easier to get it on spec when you go to a smaller manufacturer. With Dacor, it might take a bit longer to get the frame, and same maybe with Angel, but then you get the frames that are kind of spot on the spec, which is not always easy with these kind of mass market big companies. 
Um, Yonex is very good at the quality control, I must say they're the leading uh, of the bunch. I don't have my uh, V-Core Pro 97 HD here, but that's also a brilliant controller into frame, the best one for that, from Yonex in a, in a long time. Um, but a Yonex review is coming up, uh, the RD7 that I'm waiting on, and that's a real classic, and I really look forward to taking it out. I'm really looking forward to taking it out to the court and playing and reviewing it. That's all for this kind of more control oriented focus. Are you a control oriented player? Are you a player who likes to get more spin and easy depth uh, with a thicker beam, perhaps a more open pattern, um, higher stiffness rating? I mean, let me know in the comments below. Uh, do you like these types of kind of vloggish videos or do you find them boring? Let me know that too. That's all for this one. Uh, if you need help choosing a racket in, all this, in this jungle racket, I keep talking about it, it's the consultation service. A lot of five-star reviews on tennisnerd.net slash shop. If you like this kind of content where I'm uh, you know, diving deeper into the nerdy stuff, uh, check out the patreon.com slash tennisnerd where you can become a tennis nerd member for two bucks a month and you get uh, new content every week. That's about it for this one. I hope you have a nice day and that you get to play some tennis.